All right, I got my 97 Honda Odyssey here. About to do the timing belt on it. I've done many of these. I had a 96 Odyssey before this, and I have several Hondas in my stable and have for a while. And uh, this one has almost 300,000 miles on it. It needs a new timing belt. Well, we're, I'm assuming it needs a new timing belt because all the seals have gone and it leaks oil like a sieve on the front side. And that's usually a good sign that nobody's been in that front side in a long time and the timing belt's probably gonna go. So, I ordered a timing belt kit from timingbeltkits.com. And I gotta tell you, I am impressed. Though I haven't installed it, the equipment they send you, I paid 150 bucks for this. You know, you get your timing belt done at the Honda place, it's probably gonna cost you a thousand dollars. This was 150 bucks, and it's like the ASIN. This is the Japanese, I think it's original equipment. I think this is who makes it for Honda. ASIN water pump, which you always want to replace your water pump when you do your timing belt. Um, these are made in Japan seals. They're probably the original equipment, but they don't have the Honda name on it, so you're not paying for the Honda name. Auxiliary shaft seal. That'd be the crankshaft seal, the size of it, that's the camshaft seal. You got the springs. Now they actually sent real Honda springs. These are for the tensioners, the pulleys and the tensioners. Nice little card there. Tell me about kits. Bando OEM quality belts. Now I don't know anything about Bando, but, but they do appear to be very nice belts. They're made in the USA, not Japan, but these guys, I'm assuming since they've got so much nice equipment, another Japanese valve cover gasket, they give you everything. Koyo, Koyo bearings, Koyo. So I am looking forward to getting this thing running like, well, it actually runs like a sewing machine now. It just leaks oil like a sieve. So getting it back reliable. So maybe my next kid who's getting his license will have something that he can beat on and it won't die because I'll tell you, this is one of the greatest cars ever made. This thing, you cannot kill these things. You never have to do a thing to them. Nothing ever breaks. All the equipment is original. I think, um, what have I replaced on this thing? I replaced this hose right here last year. I even wrote the, when I changed it last year, 17. Oh, it's almost been two years now. I replaced it two years ago. That's it, that's the only thing I've done to this engine. Almost 300,000 miles. I'm sure some other stuff has been done to it. I bought this one used, got rid of my 96, and bought this one after it, but the 96 I had forever. And I think I replaced the starter on it and the starter switch. Other than that, it was just regular maintenance. All right, here we go. And here I have my cart full of tools and my little red wagon. Got a pan to drain some water out of the radiator because when you're messing with the water pump, you're gonna have to lose some coolant. Carbon choke cleaner. Always want to make sure you clean your parts before you put them back on. And I find carbon choke cleaner works as good as anything. I don't like brake cleaner that much. Venom gloves. Now these used to be awesome probably a couple of years ago but they've changed how they make them they're white on the inside they used to just be black inside and out this is another kind of glove there and now they're white on the inside and ever since they've done that they're just not as strong as they used to be so venom steel or whoever you're owned by if you wouldn't mind making your gloves live up to that wicked looking spider it would be um, much better because these things just tear out pretty frequently for um, I've used these other cheap HDX Home Depot kind of nitrile gloves and I think they're stronger now than the Venom but these used to go like a whole fixing the car episode and now you know I, I probably go through three pair while I'm working on it shop towels you get dirty things get dirty they need to wipe off uh, this is a new it's supposed to just be 
ratcheting spanners. This was a gift to me last year, I think, so this will probably be the first time I've used them on something major. Razor bar. That will be to get the crankshaft bolt off, which the crankshaft bolt is probably what um, what stops most do-it-yourselfers in their tracks on these cars because and, and on the Honda engines like this in general because the amount of torque it takes to get them off is insane. So you must have a good breaker bar. This actually isn't that expensive. Got it on AutoZone, I think. But not only that, you have to have a cheater about that long. I'm not kidding you. So this is on the ground here. Let me turn this around. So it's about six feet tall, almost six feet tall. I'm 6'3", so. That is the most important thing. And when this, when you go to take the, uh, the crankshaft bolt off, which is way down there at the bottom of the engine, you'll see that after we take the wheel off and everything. When that thing loosens up with the cheater, it goes kapow like a rocket. Oh, and you also need a bunch of extensions to get the breaker bar way out here so you'll have an extension going all the way under and you have to balance it on a jack stand while you're turning it yeah doesn't appear to be the safest thing just wear some safety glasses and maybe some ear protection and cringe while you bear down your entire weight on the uh, cheater and you're good to go oh and let's not forget our fuel uh, bowl of road rolled oats and a hydro flask of ice water because it is going to be probably in the 90s today or close to it and hopefully we can do this whole thing on one bowl of rolled oats first thing I recommend to do before you can get started is clean your engine so last night while the engine was a little warm not hot I sprayed it with a little simple green and hosed it down if you do it when it's hot you could actually damage something crack something because there's nothing worse well, of course, there's nothing worse than cracking your engine, but that aside, the dirtiness, there's nothing worse than just when you're trying to work on a car, just getting like so stinking dirty that you just have to stop and wipe off and wipe off and you can't see the bolts because they're covered in so much crud and stuff. So first of all, clean your engine, preferably the day before. All right, now I'm going to jack. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to jack it up. And I'm not going to use the hydraulic floor jack because if you do that, you got to go in and put jack stands under it afterwards. I'm going to use the Honda jack that came with the car. It's a screw type jack, scissors jack, if you want to call it. And they are pretty safe. You know, there's no fluid to bust and leak out. So I'm not going to have to use jack stands. Now, some people might think I still need to use jack stands, but it's pretty safe. And even if the car fell, it's probably not going to crush me. I'm actually fairly skinny. So gonna jack it up with these first and we're gonna take the wheel off so we can get in all the timing components which are behind that panel in there See where the uh, jack fits just between those two little grooves there. Before we get all the weight off of this wheel, we're going to go ahead and loosen the lugs a little bit.
Next, we're going to take this panel off so that we can get to all the timing components back there. And we start by just taking off whatever screws you find that hold that panel on. Pretty, pretty easy, hey? Oh, and I also do want to add before we get under there that the parking brake is on and working correctly. You don't want to jack up a car like this with just it in park because that means the only thing keeping this vehicle from rolling back is uh, the drivetrain, which is only to the front wheels and you got one of them missing and the car's all wonky so the, the parking brake operates the back wheels so pull it up all the way and your vehicle should not move while you're working on it of course you're doing this at your own risk so don't forget that so i also like to lay down some cardboard before i get working it uh, absorbs any oil you can lay parts on it and not worry about it getting gritty and stuff on the floor. These are obviously Toys for Tots boxes. They were in our office a couple of years ago. I saved them when the Toys for Tots people came back, but they brought new boxes and they bring new boxes every year and we have trouble, you know, we're like, we can reuse these, but I don't know if they change some things each year on the packaging or whatever, but anyways, these were free to use. And it's a good way of recycling, so I can throw these away if they get all nasty, and yet, I think that's a good thing. All right, before you go any further on your project, don't be an idiot like me and forget to unhook the negative battery terminal. And when you unhook it, make sure you unscrew it the right way because I was just doing it backward. These are... 10 millimeter bolts and I forgot that this cowl goes all the way around so what we're gonna do is um, hmm, looks like somebody left that one off last time what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take off that one over there and maybe that middle one and just let this side of the cowl droop down while we do all this stuff If you haven't um, done much work on vehicles yet and um, you're not used to working with different bolts, um, I recommend you have separate little containers, maybe, you know, whatever you, small things you use like yogurt or baby food or whatever, and put all your bolts in a separate spot and so you can and label them. But, you know, obviously if you work with this stuff a lot, you can just tell by looking at the bolts, you know, that's like a, a body panel bolt or whatever. and you're probably not going to need to so I'm going to throw all my stuff in this box that the timing stuff came into but last thing you want to do is not know what bolt goes where so if you have any any qualms about uh, putting your vehicle back together wrong you might want to uh, label all your bolts and keep them all separate there's some panel bolts I missed I think there's one on the inside under the in the engine compartment too I think we're gonna have to go ahead and start removing some of this stuff before I can even get to that. So, first things you gotta do once you get on the hood side is um, take off your power steering pump. Doesn't have to go far, you know, obviously you can leave the hoses attached and all. We're just gonna remo remove the bolts and kinda finagle it out of the way. So I'm gonna see if I can just do this whole thing without the manual. Oh, there's one more bolt down there. I don't know if you can see that. Forgot about you. Where'd you go? Right down there. All right. Somebody has gone and chewed all the edges off that bolt. So it's going to be difficult to get it off. It's impossible to get it off of the ratchet right now. I'm gonna have to try to find something to get in there. It's not much space for, for vice grips or anything. All right, 
I found some needle nose vice grips that I think will work. I'm gonna have to find some way to get that power steering pump bolt off. So it is a trip to the auto parts store to get a tool. This is my college age daughter's car. We've raised her right, haven't we? There's actually some sort of funk going on in this car, which I hope is understandable. I don't know if it has to do with the shoes or all the food. But that, I don't even see that. That uh, lid and straw keep going in my flip flop or sandal there. It's a little annoying and kind of gross, but we'll make it to the store and back. I tell you what, I miss driving this little Honda Accord. It used to be my car. Now I love, I love the van. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, this Honda Accord has the 2.3 liter with the VTEC and it just runs so smooth and it just drives so smooth. You know, people are like BMW driving machine and people are going to laugh me off this video saying an Accord, blah, blah, blah. But this Accord is very stiff and very, um, I don't know, I like to drive it. It's solid, it's stiff, it almost feels like a BMW. I've driven a few BMWs and just knowing how reliable it is and that you never have to fix anything on it for the most part and it's a little zippy and it's nice I like it all right so it was gonna be 30 bucks to get this little tool set because you got to buy like five pieces to remove that bolt and they're called bolt extract or nut extractors bolt or nut extractors or something like that and they have teeth that kind of grip it but I want to see if one of these as seen on TV products works before I spend $30 on something I'm going to use to get off one bolt. I've been working on my cars for, you know, 25 years now and I haven't had to do something like that yet. So instead of the auto parts store, instead of the auto parts store, we're going to try Walgreens. Walgreens was a no-go, so we're going to try the grocery store. The funk in this car is just so bad. It's almost intolerable. It smells like rotting vegetables or something. So, parenting tip. This is what I'm going to do. If you do not clean out this car, you are going to have to start paying for your own car insurance. And she'll know I'm serious. Alright, no luck at the grocery store either. I used to see these things everywhere. I don't know if they're called like Gorilla Grip sockets or something, but they have all these little pins in them and they supposedly can fit any size socket, relatively speaking, any size nut or bolt. And they used to be everywhere, said as seen on TV. Maybe they didn't work and they stopped selling them, but I could have sworn I saw them at the grocery store and at Walmart. I'm not at Walmart, I'm at the grocery store. No luck. No luck at Walgreens. No luck at the auto parts store. We'll try somewhere else. All right, it was just too far to drive to get to the Walmart or some other place like that. So we went to Advanced Auto this time and they had actually a better set of what the other guy was trying to sell me. Got AutoZone was trying to sell me something that had been used and put back in the box and actually one of the extractors was all chewed up inside. It probably was the one I needed. So this is what we got from Advanced. Irwin bolt grip. This is not what I was looking for. I was looking for something that I think is called like the Gorilla Grip socket or something like that. I could be totally wrong. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. It's like a socket about that long. It has a bunch of pins inside and can supposedly remove any size socket. But we're going to try this. It was 30 bucks. My wife's not going to like that. But hopefully it's a tool I'll be able to use in the future. All right, we're going to start with the... Uh It's pretty chewed up. I'm going to start with the, this one here that says it's 7 16ths and 11 millimeter. That's a 3 8 drive. See if that works. If that doesn't fit on it, we'll move on up to the half inch and 13. 3 8 here. I need a little extension. I like this cobalt tool set. This is the first 
full set I've had. Of course, there's not everything you need in here. I used to work out of this toolbox over here. And obviously now I work out of two toolboxes, so I don't know if this actually helped any. But one thing I did notice is this right here is a half, and this is a 7 16 But Lowe's or Cobalt put two 7 16 in here. So I'm short a half. I do mostly metric stuff because I only work on Japanese cars for the most part. So I don't really need a half off them, but I actually needed a half the other day to work on the lawnmower and I wanted the deep well socket and I didn't have one. So I'm going to have to contact Lowe's and say, hey, can, can you give me a half? Because somebody screwed up in the factory. It looks like I'm gonna have to cut this belt off to get it out of the way Which that's okay because the kid over there came with a new belt And I might have to take this pulley off too just to get at this so these $30 extractors Not working. I've just managed to chew the bolt up even worse Here's a tip the uh, power steering pump Holy bolt is threaded in reverse, so lefty tidy, righty loosey. So this is absolutely crazy. I've tried to get this thing off with the big vice grips and little vice grips, and now I'm going to try to get it off with the Dremel and a metal cutting blade without actually chewing into the threads on that bolt. Alright, hopefully what I've done is with the metal cutting bit on the uh, Dremel is I've flattened both sides of this bolt to give it something to bite on and we'll see if that works. So the nut still won't come off no matter what we do. I've cut into it with the little grinding wheel to make some flat spots to get more bite on it but that didn't work. It's like the nuts made out of aluminum. I know it's not but it just strips and just it just like melts under every wrench and stuff I put on it. So I've come to the Honda place. And I figured I'd just go ahead and cut the bolt off and get a new... It's, it's not a bolt, it's a stud that goes through the power steering bracket to adjust it. And I'm, if I cut the nut off, I'm going to end up damaging the stud anyway. So I thought I might as well go ahead and buy the stud. Because this is a holiday weekend and they're not going to be open. They don't have the stud on hand and they have to order it. But they can't order it until the holiday is over. I don't understand that. He couldn't order it while I was in there. He said you have to come back after the holiday and order it. And then wait on it. So, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the house and see if I can figure something else out. So if you can get some place for your punch to bite, you can hammer it around. Well, I got the nut off. So now we go see if we can find another one to, to replace the uh, nasty ground up nut. So here's the original ground up nut. And it has this washer on it that like turns. That's going to be probably a little bit of a problem, but this is not anybody in my family's name. This was left over to school. My wife is a teacher kindergarten aid. So first we gotta find something that'll work. So we gotta find out what size this is. Let's see. Bit. Let's pull it right here. So that builds the right size. 
So we we'll found a nut that works with this bolt and we will have I think we found one right here. That's it, right there. So, I wonder if we can get this washer off of that. So let's try something else. So that worked. Got the uh, adjust this. Got that um, focus. And we'll just put the new nut on there like that. That should work pretty good. All right, before you go any further on your project, don't be an idiot like me and forget to unhook the negative battery terminal and when you unhook it make sure you unscrew it the right way because I was just doing it backward all right let's get back to it now you got that old nut off there and just so I don't lose my place I'll put that washer and the new nut back and the uh, power steering pump is totally detached we're not going to unhook the hoses or anything we just need to be able to move this to get it out of the way when we need to now we're gonna work on the alternator. All right, here's something I don't like about these cobalt socket sets. There's no rhyme or reason to when you get 12 point or six point. I actually prefer six point because they don't tear up your nuts and bolts as much. And all the ones I want in six point are not in six point, they're in 12 point. So I had to dig into my old bench top set from Kmart from 20 some years ago to get six point sockets out but look at this some of these say 12 point right for a one half you'd think the big honking ones would have six point but they don't so then you step down to three eighths well, that's still on. three eighths drive there we go it's still 12 point thing in the deep wells. But then you go to these little quarter inch drives. Man, that's not a quarter inch. There's no quarter. Quarter inch drives. And they have the six points. I mean, what's up with that? You know, if you need some leverage, you're going to want it on the big stuff, not on the little stuff necessarily. But I prefer it on all the stuff possible. <sighs> Alright, got the alternator belt off. Did that by loosening the bolt that goes through here first. Sticking out over there. Alright. Well, underneath. There you go. Eh, can't see it. Just forget about that part. Bolt that goes there and then there is a... You can see that right there. There's a bolt right down there that uh, you loosen up to get some slack in the line. After you loosen a bolt right underneath it, you're going to really have to feel for that bolt. And then you push down on the alternator and the belt comes off. Now we're going to go way down there and unhook this uh, the oil dipstick here. 
Next on the list is we're gonna have to take this engine mount off, which first you loosen it up from the engine itself by taking that nut off and that bolt out. Then take that through bolt off right there. Are you talking to And these come off with a 17 millimeter deep well and an extension. Ah. I'm going to have to do this off camera so I can use two hands. Remove the grounding connections from the motor mount. Attach right there. One goes to the valve cover here, and one goes to the body there. Let me get that three bolt out there. The whole motor mount just comes right out. So you got the grounding wires on that. And now you have all this space to work with to get the rest of the stuff off. Next, before you get that, this is the timing cover housing, that black part right there with the uh, nice little barcode on the side. You have to take the valve cover off. I like to wait until the very last minute to do the valve cover because, you know, you don't want a whole bunch of debris and garbage going into your open cylinder head with all the oil galleries and stuff in there so so we're gonna do that next basically what you do is pull all your plug wires out they just literally pull out pull all those out pull your PCV valve out Ow. and just set those to the side we can clean them off later Pull all this off. Um, might be able to pop the cable. This is the throttle cable. Or is it the... Uh, cruise control cable. Might be the cruise control cable. With whatever it is. It goes to the throttle. There's the throttle back there. One's cruise control, I think. And the other goes straight to the accelerator. Thing, just pop those out and if they don't pop out which they do hey, come on there there we go and just literally lift those out of the way there's usually something that'll hang up there and they're out of your way and we'll get this off we'll detach this little hose right here and then there's one two three four nuts to take off and the valve cover comes up. I want to mention before you pull all your plug wires out you might want to label like one two three four or one two three four I don't remember the order usually I think it goes away from the distributor so one two three four and uh, what's good for this is like a paint pen a white paint pen or silver paint pen and just write it literally on the the boot itself up there but if you don't have that which I don't your wife's fingernail polish will work as well. And there she blows. And these are the seals that have gone bad. These are little rubber seals. I don't think they came with the kit. 
but that's why oil is getting down in the spark plug holes until we need to get to this part what we'll do is we'll cover this up with a clean trash bag keep the dirt debris and critters out of it oh and for the first time you can actually see part of the timing belt under the cover there that's what we're going to be ultimately replacing before we get any further it's probably a good idea to stop now and put the engine in neutral because when you're doing the timing belt you have to take it out of park and put it in neutral to release the engine so that you can actually rotate it in any direction you need because that's important when you're doing the timing belt you'll see that kind of stuff later and uh, since we already unhooked the negative battery cable you'll find that if you put your keys in and turn them and push on the brake or whatever you can't get it out of park so the designers have made a workaround for that just for this very reason and there's a little slot right there that you press your key down in while you pull on your lever and it pops right out of gear so that's the shift lock release stick your key down in there and pull the bar down to whatever gear you need it in so now we're in neutral let's see if this non cover gasket did come with the those seals yes yes indeed those are what we need so we got everything i have to give it to these people they think of everything so you get the timing belt and then that will be the second one that says timing belt is the balance shaft belt i think and you get two tensioner pulleys you get water pump valve cover gasket that'd be camshaft seal crankshaft seal auxiliary shaft seal one of these would be your power steering belt one of these would be your alternator belt a retainer that holds one of the seals in I can't remember which seal it is but we'll get to that that's the retainer it's just a little metal bracket that holds the seal on what else two springs those are the Honda ones yep these folks are awesome I'm going to have to remember this I don't think I got my last kit from them I think I ended up buying everything separately and had it shipped from all over the place and had to wait two or three weeks for all the parts to come in this took like two days Morton Virginia all right here's where we get to the fun stuff we're gonna go ahead and take this crankshaft pulley bolt off and uh, well you'll see to do it you're gonna need this tool right here crank pulley holder for Honda looks like this and you put your socket wrench ratchet whatever through there and it goes in here and you use that to hold the pulley still while you turn that bolt inside there all right here's the absolutely insane setup you need to do this there's the tool in the middle that i just showed you hooked to a breaker bar which is going to be wedged against the floor of the carport as we turn this this is a 19 millimeter six point socket with a I can't remember how long this extension is like at least maybe 20 inches comes all the way out from under to a ratchet it's under there with a cheater about six feet long and hopefully nothing will pop loose while we're trying to break this open
Let's see if that worked. Well, I blew my holder off of here and this off. But, oh, look at that. That's how you do it. I need to get this pulley off in order to get to the bottom timing belt cover. There's two timing belt covers that split in the middle. There's a top and a bottom. And this pulley is in the way of the bottom. That big old bolt out of there. Ooh. Sometimes this will slide right out. Sometimes you have to wiggle it. Give it a couple of whacks with a hammer. I feel it wiggling. We'll see. Might have to use two hands for this. A little PB blaster in there to help the process. There we go. I can feel it coming. And there she is. Ugly. Now we can work on that plastic cover. All you basically do, you can see nastiness. This is why we clean our engines. Of course, I couldn't get under here. The cowl was blocking it. But you basically just find all the uh, bolts on the plastic cover and just take them all off. I'm not going to video Run that. Run into another little problem. Run into another little problem. This, uh, yeah. That little bolt down there. So I have turned and turned and it just turns and pops in there so I'm gonna have to pry this out. It's not that necessary of a bolt, bolt, it's just holding on this plastic cover. Some people run without these covers on at all. Um, I don't advise it because if something gets up in there it can break your timing belt but it's possible. I got the top cover off. A couple more bolts I think to get the bottom off. Okay, got both covers off now, and it is nasty in there. Look at all that oil. This is the balancer shaft pulley. So that's the balancer shaft right there, if you imagine a shaft running through there. And it goes back behind this engine. I don't know if I can get this in here. So... Okay, there is right there a bolt. If I take that bolt out, there is a slot there, a hole, that you can stick something in, like a, an Allen wrench or a screwdriver, and turn everything, turn the crankshaft, which will turn the balance shaft until the screwdriver or Allen wrench or whatever slides in to the shaft there's a hole in the middle of the shaft somewhere or in the side of the shaft or something and once that's in there everything else everything's lined up in a certain way that it needs to be otherwise the engine won't be balanced <coughs> there we go nope so now we stick something like an allen wrench we can in there Push it down, straight in there, and when we turn all this stuff around, that should slide in and lock in place, sort of. Put our crankshaft pulley tool on our ratchet, and stick it in here. We're going to use it to turn our crankshaft while we try to push that. Allen wrench in that slot and it should slip in eventually. I might not be able to get this on video though. All right, so it slipped in all the way and now we are no longer able to turn our pulley whatsoever. So that means it's all lined up correctly and this shaft, this balance shaft is locked in yeah, place. Down there and loosen that bolt right there to take the balance belt off. There we go. And I would turn it the wrong way. Turn 
little hammer action here. Don't try that at home. It's not good for your tools. Now with that loose, I should be able to move this pulley. Yeah, there you go, see? That whole pulley moves up and down, and then we can get this felt off. Be easier if I take that pulley off too because we're actually going to change the seal that's back behind there's that keeper you see that we got the new keeper and there's a seal right behind there that we're going to change so I'm just going to take that that bolt off right there pull that pulley off and the belt and then we can get to the seal but we'll get to the seal when we're putting it all back together got the screwdriver into the shaft right there Got the cheater on. Okay, one more time. Yes. Yes. I guess I can take this cheater off. That's probably going to fall down there. Hmm. Just finish ratcheting that off. Alright, I actually already got this pulley off, but just to show you how I did it, it was on there pretty tight. They're all on there pretty snug because they fit so well. So what I basically did was uh, I, uh, put this pry bar in between here and I literally just kept lightly whacking it and about after two minutes. Whacking, it came off far enough to just reach down in there and wiggle a little bit more and there she is but don't get discouraged if you you know you get to pulling on it and thinking oh this isn't going to come off when you just pull straight on it just stick something behind it and tap for a little while i guarantee you within five minutes you'll have it off now we can get down in there and get that pulley off which will enable us to get to the timing belt down there at the bottom and of course mark it before we take it off all right so let's go ahead and see if we can pull this pulley off oh i think this one's going to come off easy i'm going to put this light over here Oh yeah, and it's got a key to it too, so we gotta make sure we don't lose that. Oh, and there it goes. And it's got a taper on it, which has one direction. Yeah, that's it. Taper goes inside. So the way you get this timing belt off is you push down on the belt where this tensioner is. You can feel there's a spring in there. I probably should wait until daylight to film this, but you push down right there and then you tighten that bolt right there and that holds it loose. And then you take the belt off and then when you put the new one on you loosen that bolt again and it puts tension back on the belt. So I'm going to try to reach down here and push on this belt and then tighten that bolt while I'm pushing on it. And then we ought to be able to slip the timing belt off and then the other pulleys we need to get off.
we'll see if that worked. Oh yeah, look how loose that is. So now, I should be able to just slip this off. And there is the timing belt. All right, let's call it a night. I definitely got through a little more than that one bowl of oatmeal and that glass of water since this was fraught with problems but hey now you're gonna know when you come across some problems like strip bolts and stuck things this is how you get through we're gonna go ahead and drain the coolant tonight too just because it likes to drip for a long time make sure most of the water is out of the water pump so I don't know if you can see this but there's a square hole in the cowl and just above that you'll find little wing nut in the back of the radiator and you can sometimes unscrew it by hand i had to use pliers to get it started and you just turn it counterclockwise you know a couple of turns and it starts pouring out and you want to come up top and loosen your radiator cap and it'll start flowing better and then just leave it for a while and unless it's pet safe off. You probably want to come back and make sure you uh, dispose of it before any animals come out and decide to drink it because it's apparently very sweet. That has another key in there we don't want to lose. So keep an eye on that. And there's that nasty looking seal we're going to need to replace. It's all swollen up. They put this little cover on here for the specific purpose of when the seal does go bad, any oil that leaks out, most of it goes behind here instead of into the timing area, which would likely cause the belt to slip or jump or wear prematurely by being eaten away by the oil so we're going to take this off too and clean it up before we put it back on well i was hoping to avoid this but it looks like to get this last bolt off here i'm gonna to have to remove this whole engine bracket well, it appears there are 15 millimeter bolts to get this bracket off. How many are there? One. Is there one up here? Yep, two. And three. Yep. Three 15 millimeters. <clears throat> Cheater time. Cheater time. Alright, get the bracket out of there. Yeah. 
lots more room to work now and film. Finish getting this cover off. There it is. Yeah. Now this corner right here is um, all broken and chewed up from an overzealous mechanic over tightening something there and there's actually supposed to be an insert there a metal insert which popped out when we were trying to get this thing off so what I'm going to do is put some JB weld in there and put the insert back in and see if we can't get this working up correctly again first I got to clean all that grease off before I do that You know this, this crankshaft pulley won't come off because of this retainer. So we will take that off. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts. There we go. Okay, get that out of the way. Set that to the side. And this should come off. Like so. But before we start taking any seals off, we want to take the water pump off and go ahead and replace it because we don't want any coolant running into any of these open, open uh, areas. Looks like we might have to take this pulley off before we can even get the whole water pump off. Matching spanner instead. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, that's better. these all together keep them in the right order Ugh. like that and that comes off and that spring there so we know which spring goes in there 
Now we'll take the pry bar again. Let's see if this works. So just behind here. Give it a little. Oh, so gentle. And there goes a bunch of coolant that's always left over. So now that'll literally just fall off here. Oh my. That's why we didn't take the seals off first. Thankfully nobody's put any RTV silicone or, R or anything on this. As long as you got the O-ring, you're good to go. and sealed up in plastic. Ooh. Nice little Japanese instruction seat sheet. Hmm. Pretty straightforward. All you do is put the O-ring on and bolt the thing back on. So it has these little little stick outs there, I don't know what you call that, detents, indents, that help pinch the o-ring in place so it doesn't fall off when you're installing it. So just make sure you push it really good in around those little stick outs. all installed. Now it's time to start working on these seals. We'll start with the uh, camshaft seal up here. Now I haven't sprung for a uh, seal puller yet so I just use this little, I guess it's like a brad puller for carpentry or something, pulling little nails and just be very careful and just pry a little at a time. Try not to, well don't scratch don't scratch the shaft and don't scratch seats because it will leak the new one will leak if there's grooves cut in there sometimes a tiny screwdriver actually actually works even better and it doesn't help that this handle doesn't Stay on. I might actually need to invest in a seal puller. There it goes. Now we'll clean that out. Oh wait, it looks like there's a retainer stuck in there or something. Yeah, that seal came apart. Look at that. Get that little bit of retainer off of there. scratching anything. The thing just disintegrated. There it goes. I'll put the new seal it, clean that up first. A little bit of brake cleaner or throttle body cleaner on a rag. Run it through that groove. And I wipe my gloves really good with a uh, carb cleaner. Now this is the camshaft seal so I'll be really careful not to get it dirty and I used to put grease on this to hold it in place and grease on the inside sometimes silicon grease sometimes bearing grease and I found it tends to leak a lot more if you do that so we're just going to put a little bit of regular motor oil the kind that the engine takes on the inside and outside of this so it slips on easier.
appears that a 32 millimeter is just the right size. So sometimes this helps you just push it in evenly. And sometimes you need to use a little bit of hammering. take that front balance shaft seal retainer off it's one bolt right down there and that'll come off and then we'll replace that seal right there Got that out and we'll clean that up same clean that up the same way to work this around in there with a screwdriver very gently but maybe not now we cleaned our gloves up really good and we will open the new auxiliary shaft seal and put a little oil on it For these hard to reach places I like to just go in there with an allen wrench and put the short arm if you can see that put the short arm on it and then just hammer the back of the allen wrench anywhere I can to seat the seal the kit came with a new retainer so we'll put that down there Now we'll uh, pull out the crankshaft seal. Alright, this seal is being a little bit stubborn, so we're going to try an unorthodox and somewhat risky approach. We're going to take some screws and try to screw them very carefully into the center of the seal edges. Being careful not to scratch either of the surfaces and then we're going to try to pull the whole thing out with the screws. Yeah, I'll try that again. Well, it worked, but I don't know if you can see that in there. It did nick it up a little bit. So, only time will tell if this crankshaft is going to leak forever more. Because there's not a whole lot you can do about that once you scratch it. Shaft seal.
so it still allows this arm to rotate. I'm gonna replace that spring. Yeah. Oh, this spring. It's a brand new one. Okay, with that little hollow wrench, pull it up and let it slip over. That's all there is to it. Now that fully tensions itself. I'm going to go ahead and put the camshaft sprocket back on. Make sure that key's lined up right. Maybe somewhere around there. There it is. Can't believe you'll let me put the stinking thing on backward. You really got to pay attention. The side that says up goes out. The side with the arrow goes inside. Get this right this time. Hey, yeah, that slips on much easier that way. We're gonna torque the camshaft sprocket to 27 foot pounds. There we go. Done with the camshaft sprocket. I'm gonna go ahead and put the other spring on, the other tensioner pulley. This one. Both ends are identical, so it doesn't really matter which way you put it. But it goes from there to that arm right there. I gotta push this tensioner pulley right here down as far as it goes and then tighten this bolt right here. There we go. This should hold that in place so we can get the timing belt back on. Just gonna make sure that the up is straight up and then the belt goes around the water pump on that side and then as it goes around the water pump you bring it back up over the tensioner pulley then it goes down to the crankshaft pulley which we don't have it actually on there yet it'll go down around there when we get it lined up right if you can see there's a little notch right back here and you're actually going to want to align this key basically or you can see there's a little teeny pointer arrow unless you got a lot of light you miss that and that little arrow lines up with that little notch on the top there so in order to uh, rotate that we're gonna have to put the pulley back on temporarily Let's see how we did. Not quite. Just a hair back in the other direction. Alright. We got that dead on. Now, even though I already told you to make sure just to have this pointed up, and that's just the start of it. I actually give you a way to make this a little more accurate. On the other side of the sprocket are some little grooves cut in those teeth. And, uh, my finger's gonna be in the way, but focus right there. See, there's a little groove cut in that tooth. And there's one on the other side too, which I don't know if you can see. There it is. And we line those up basically with the head on both sides. I don't think I'm going to be able to film that, but just try to get those two notches lined up flat with the, the edges of the head. And your cam camshaft should be uh, perfectly aligned. Just be really careful to slip this over without moving anything. There we go. There we go. Now, 
That's still aligned. Yep. Yep. Now we're just going to loosen this bolt right here, which will release the tensioner pulleys and let the spring do what it's supposed to do. There it goes. So that's just loose enough so that the belt is pulled taut right there. So we're going to put this back on. Rotate it counterclockwise, three teeth. Use our tool. There we go. And counterclockwise, three teeth. That's definitely three teeth. Or more. I'd say that's it. Now we just go back up top and tighten that bolt again and our timing belt is exactly where it needs to be. And it says to tighten this up to 33 foot-pounds. That's probably 33-ish. Alright, after you've done that and tighten that bolt go back and realign your timing marks and now we're going to work on the balancer belt so the front balancer shaft has a mark right there on the oil pump body and when we put the sprocket to this back on it will have something that lines up with that well, there's a corresponding mark right there. So, right there. Alright, so the new balancer belt. We'll go. We'll drop it down there under the car so we have to go grab it out of this nastiness. Hopefully, it's not too dirty. And try to get it around the back one first since the back one is locked in place. And then we'll get it under that tensioner right there. There's just a nest that's several weeks old in this. And it's not even really a nest nest unless there's some other way to get inside of it. Is there like a hole to get inside? <gasps> there is. Oh my, I didn't even know that. Now we got it figured out. All right. I'm really disappointed in y'all. Y'all let me go all the way and put that timing belt back on before I actually put this cover on that goes behind the crankshaft pulley. So, quick way to fix this without causing too much problem, and hopefully this will work this time, is I'm going to mark the belt again right here and this and then I'm going to loosen that bolt again loosen the timing belt remove that sprocket and try to keep this belt on the sprocket put the shroud behind it and slip the belt and sprocket back on We'll see how that goes.
All right, through the magic of video editing, we took this off, we did mark it, we got it right back where it was supposed to go, and retensioned the timing belt. Now back to the balancer belt. Around that first sprocket down there, undo the tensioner, and then make sure, make sure that is lined up correctly and put it around that and we go down to the bottom and put our bottom sprocket on we'll loosen this again Tensioner, fully a little bit loose there. And we'll go down to the bottom, grab our bottom pulley. And it's probably going to take two hands. I'm going to try to line, try to line that key, keyway up and the belt at the same time. All right, we got that slid in place. Belt on. Hopefully our mark is still where it needs to be up top. Yes, marks still aligned. Now with all the belts installed and this bolt here still loose, we're going to rotate the crankshaft one full turn and then we're going to tighten that bolt up and we should be done. got it off. Now put the lower timing cover on and let me just tell you this is a pain to get up here. And once you get it up here you should be very proud of yourself. Time for the top cover. I gotta tell you I'm hating Honda right now. They make awesome cars but they make this process very difficult. Put a new o-ring on the dipstick tube and put the dipstick tube back down on the hole where it goes valve cover goes oh but first I better take the spark plugs out which you're actually supposed to take the spark plugs out when you're doing your timing belt but I didn't do that because you're fighting the engine compression the whole time when you're trying to rotate it but if you're patient it's not that big of a deal probably should have done this already these are soaked in oil now I probably just filled up that cylinder with oil I'm gonna clean so the uh, those chambers out and um, we'll put this paper towel down in here with an long screwdriver. Hopefully soak that up. Now you don't want any to tear off down in there, so you got to be careful not to be too rough with it. This thing was just absolutely soaked in oil. You couldn't even see the white part; it was just globbed so much on. I'm going to put this back in and then I'm going to do that to all those. Alright, get ready for plug number two. Ah, 
that one soaked in oil too. This aluminum is very soft, so you have to be careful with these razor blades. Preferably use a new one. I was using this to clean the head on a lawnmower, and I don't remember which side I used, but if you scrape like this for a while, then the top side gets burr, so if you flip it over, it'll scratch it. So I'm probably doing it backward. Sometimes it works even better to just take a paper towel and a flathead screwdriver and work in all the problem areas. Then flip the head over and clean it the same way in this groove run your paper towel along there with some throttle body cleaner or take a flathead screwdriver and stick it in that groove and clean it out good all the way around and don't forget the spark plug chamber seals here open your gasket kit got all the seals in and the valve cover gasket itself only goes one way, so don't be afraid to try it both ways. You'll you'll figure it out when you uh, when you get it the right way. You're supposed to put a little RTV sealant in uh, these places on both sides of the camshaft hold downs. Uh, the top of this was frozen up. I'm using this ultra black. It might not be the best thing to do, but it's what I happen to have. And since it's a holiday, I can't get anything else. And the uh, lid was, it was all crudded up in lid. So I've uh, just cut the bottom open and put some in there. It's a little messy, but not too much. And just carefully set the valve cover gasket back on put the new grommets on stay out of the way And tighten them with a 10 millimeter. Oops, I forgot. And the throttle cable goes under that valve cover nut right there. Obviously, some sort of vapors come out of here and go back into the uh, throttle body. Got it by hand. And PCB valve. <clears throat> plug wires. Clipped on the spark plug head. Yep, fell out and snap. Give it a little wiggle. Keep this motor mount back on there. Good boy. Okay. Right there, that mount. And we won't forget our ground connections. Looking for a big through bolt. It looks like that. We're going to put that in first on the side of the mount. Mm 
And we got a big nut. It goes on the stud right there. I'm just gonna leave it sitting on top so you can see it right there on that one. And then we got a big bolt that goes down there. Power steering pump. Right, the bolt comes through there. Pull it back on. Screw that in and then we'll torque it. And this takes something crazy like 176 pounds of torque or something, which is higher than my torque wrench goes up to. So I'm just gonna put the breaker bar on and snug it up. It should be fine. That's it right there. That should do it. The power steering pump pulley back on. Putting the power steering belt and alternator belt and the cowl back up and that kind of stuff is pretty easy, but there's probably a ton of YouTubes out there of people changing power steering and alternator belts. So. I'm going to stop with the instructional there and then we'll jump right to us starting it, the moment of truth. I'm about to crank it up right now and I'm assuming that it's going to spit and sputter because all the spark plug um, chambers had oil or water in them and so when I pulled the spark plugs out I'm assuming that drained into each cylinder. So I don't think this is going to be pretty when it starts. I hope it doesn't hydrolock itself. Might want to look that up. Hydrolock is terrible, especially if it happens at speed. So I'm just going to give it a little crank, see if it sputters. I assume it'll probably start on two cylinders maybe, and then another cylinder or two will kick in, and uh, then we'll see lots of smoke maybe. Okay, just what I thought. It had difficulty starting, sputtered a little bit, but then it worked it all out. And I must have got the balancer shafts timed right because there is absolutely no vibration. So that's how you do it. So it's a week later. The engine is still running great. Uh, it's actually running better than before, I think. Actually, I'm pretty sure that they had the balance shaft timing off just a little bit because when I put the Allen wrench in there to lock it in place, the crank and cam weren't at dead center. So I know it wasn't perfectly balanced, but it seemed to run smooth before I did the work. 
but then after I did the work I noticed it ran a lot smoother you can't even feel you can put your hands on the steering wheel when it's running and and you can hardly tell the, en the engines running the whole thing just seems to be so smooth now uh, accelerate smooth no hiccups no hesitations um, what else did I notice oh no oil leaks so I've been checking the oil every day and she's holding tight well I guess that's pretty much it I'm happy with the work it was tough as it always is I think this is my fourth time doing the timing belt on one of these Honda F engines and uh, I always get a little excited right before I do it and think uh, this is awesome I'm gonna get this car running great again and, and ready to go for another hundred thousand miles and then when I'm in the middle of it I think what in the world have I gotten myself into you want to tackle your timing belt yourself you can probably get all the work done and all the parts and everything for under two hundred dollars as opposed to you know that it can run anywhere from eight hundred to well over a thousand dollars to get what we did on this car done you know timing belt balance belt pulleys seals gaskets water pump did I say that and accessory belts and all that it can it can really cost you a lot of money and this cost me under $200 I said at the beginning it was about $150 I was trying to remember what I paid online went back and looked at my invoice after taxes and everything it was $168 I think for the complete timing kit for this 97 Honda Odyssey 2.2 liter so that'd be the same thing as the Accord um, 2.2 liter so that, there's a lot of those engines out there you know a lot of you watching obviously have one so it's it's something you can do and it's it'll teach you a lot doing a timing belt will teach you a lot about engines especially if you get a manual and I recommend you get a manual I think I have a Haynes manual or had a Haynes manual for this car but I lost it so I had to use my Accord manual at the end I thought I was gonna do the whole thing manual free but you know when you only do it every hundred thousand miles or so you forget a lot of stuff so I thought I was just gonna blow through this but you know as you could see in the videos I forgot you have to remove this first or that first or whatever you know if you're only doing it every like three or four years you know you're gonna get a little rusty in between but you know it's worth it if you have a manual it is step by step you know hopefully you can use this video and the manual and come up with a successful repair yourself or maintenance since it's not really a repair and I think you'll be happy. Y'all take care. Thanks for watching.